No, just anything different? Yeah. Yeah, nothing. Yeah, I, I got a haircut. Well, I got a French cut. As you can see, it's it's very messy this morning because I've just brushed it out. My hair is naturally curly. So when I brush it, it goes <laughs> So I've got a bit of like a Stevie Nicks thing going on here, but hello everyone. Welcome back to a new video. It's been a week since I've uploaded. I had a very, very nice break just to myself, having some quiet time, listening to a lot of music, all that kind of stuff as one does in a break. And hopefully I am back and better than ever because I feel a lot better and I have been itching to upload so I'm guessing that's a good thing. I thought I would make a video of a topic that I've not actually covered in, in like a month or so and that is my favourite albums of the 70s episode 7 I believe we're on now and I will be talking about 1975. Now I should have talked about 1975 first then 1976 because I did 1976 a while ago. I'm here with 1975 now. So I've listened to really listened to all these albums in the past week. All of them I like a lot because these are my favourite albums of the year. I was about to say decade of the year. So I'm just going to explain a couple of things before I start the video because I've been gone for a week. So I should uh, explain myself a little bit. So essentially, I've got a new little segment in each video that I do. I will be doing something called Album of the Day. Now, as you know, I've got quite an extensive record collection, not just here, but also downstairs. I have logged every single album that I own into this spinny wheel thingy. And what I'm going to do is every video, I'm going to spin it and that's going to be the album of the day. So that will come at the end of the video. Also, there will be a video coming very, very soon about my plans for university, upload schedule during then and all that kind of jazz. It feels like I'm not going for ages, but the last time I started mentioning university and stuff, it was like months ago and now I'm literally moving in a month. So this is it's very weird for me as well. Let's talk about 1975. What a great year for music. Not just prog, but music in general. So these are just going to be progressive rock albums. Because this is a progressive rock channel. Maybe I'll cover my favourite non-prog albums of the 70s at some point, because I was planning that. As I've been listening to quite a lot of non-progressive rock stuff in the past week or so. We'll just see, alright? Well, I'll just think about it. So, there are quite a lot here. So let's get started. So the first one I've got here, I don't own this on vinyl, this is the only album that I've got to show you today that I haven't got on vinyl, and that is The Rotters Club by Hatfield on the North. I am a big fan of this band. Um, I prefer their first album, the self-titled, but this one is very, very good. I only heard this one very recently, which is weird, because this is the one that's like more well-known than the first one. But this was a fantastic album. This is a Japanese pressing as well. As you know, we are big Japanese pressing fans in this household. We've got quite a lot. This sounds amazing and definitely one to check out. They are a Canterbury scene band. Just a little bit of background information. Canterbury scene band who are just fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. This is um, Dave Stewart and Richard Sinclair who are well-known within the Canterbury scene. And this is, it's great. I love the way they format their albums, I love this album and the music content is fantastic. I think Richard Sinclair is a great, great bass guitarist. But this is a fantastic album and one to check out if you are getting into that kind of Canterbury scene. Jazz fusion, weird, progressive rock, kind of whimsical English sounding music. Alright, going on to the vinyl section now. So there were quite a few solo albums that I really like that were released in 1975. And probably my favourite out of the few that I'm going to mention is this one. So this is Chris Squire's Fish Out of Water. This is a fantastic, well put together, beautiful record. I think the songwriting is fantastic. The musicianship obviously was going to be fantastic because it's this guy. What a guy, huh? Just everything about this album is so brilliant. I mean, it's not a long one at all. It's only about, I think it's like five or six tracks long. Yeah, it's five tracks long and each track is just beautiful. My favourite track is probably Silently Falling because I, I just love that so much. And there's like a delicacy to the album that is not seen in the Yes catalogue, obviously, because we hear more of that kind of melodic bass line kind of sound quite upbeat at points and stuff like that. But this is a very soft, mellow album that is one to check out if you like Yes and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, Chris Squire, Fish Out of Water. Great album. One of my biggest inspirations when it comes to bass guitar ever. Probably the biggest other than Geddy Lee, of course. Okay, so going to the other solo album 
of a prog band that I'm gonna be talking about today. So we got Steve Hackett's first solo album, Voyage of the Acolytes. It's fantastic. I have two copies of this album. This one is from the box set, and I've got another one up there, which is like a relatively old pressing, which I might put up for sale at some point. First of all, let's just talk about this artwork. Isn't it beautiful? It is stunning and well drawn, all that kind of stuff. And the music ain't half bad either. It's fantastic. It opens so, so beautifully and ends so beautifully. I am a big fan of this. Out of all the kind of Genesis solo stuff, I probably lean more towards Steve Hackett and Peter Gabriel. I'm not really much into the Phil Collins solo stuff. This is a fantastic album. One to definitely listen to because it's it's beautiful. It's It's instrumental. Oh my gosh. Just fabulous. Fabulous album. Great guitarist. Like, kind of underrated in my opinion. You know, like, obviously not as in your face as, like, you know, Hendrix or Page or Gilmore or anyone like that. Definitely in the pantheon of great guitarists, though. So definitely check this out. The next one I'm going to talk about is the first album of this band that I think we ever got. And it's stuck with me. Lyrically, it's very very well done put together hard hitting at times and just stunning i think that it's well put together all that kind of stuff i know i'm mentioning the same kind of phrases for each album but i'm being honest here and that is van de graaf generators god bluff now this is not my favorite van de graaf generator album it is still porn hearts but this one is so 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 good and i mean the undercover man was one of the first songs that I heard by them and it instantly grabbed me and I thought well if this is the song that I believe opens up the album we are in for a real treat with the rest of the album so this is amazing it's just Peter Hamill is such a great great musician such a great front man I really like theatrical aspects to progressive rock with within the voice and stage presence and I think he's really really got that and also with the one i'm about to mention next so this one is great for those people who like that kind of theater and dramaticness of music and just overall great songwriting this one is one to give a try talking of theatrical vocalists and stage presence here we have jethro tull's minstrel in the gallery now i'm so excited just a quick side note this friday coming i am actually going to see jethro tull at the New Day Festival in Kent. If you're gonna be going to that, come say hi. Me and my dad are gonna be there and it will be great fun because I believe Soft Machine are also playing. So it's gonna be a great, great time. They're playing the whole of Aqualung, Jethro Tull. So that's besides the point. This is a fantastic album. This one's new to me as well. This and a passion play are newer to me than, you know, Thick as a Brick and Aqualung because I've known about those for a while through my dad. These are ones that I've kind of found myself, but this is really great. I'm a big fan of it. You know, I love the title track and. I just love Jethro Tull. I love the theatrical style and their live performance is always great. I think that they always do great with the kind of improvisation and all that kind of stuff. I got, I think I got this at the record fair. I think I got it at the record fair. I could have got it either that or I got it at a record store in Camden somewhere. And one to check out because a lot of people talk about, you know, Aqualung, Thick as a Brick, but these kind of later Jethro Tull stuff and the really early Jethro Tull, Jethro Tull stuff, like Stand Up and Benefit and well, the first one, I've forgotten the name of it, but those ones are relatively underrated, so definitely check out these ones if you like that kind of Jethro Tull sound. It's not as hard rocky as Aqualung, it's more on the kind of proggier, more folky English kind of side. This list would not be complete if this album wasn't part of it, because I think this is probably the most well-known to the general public prog album of 1975. And it is a brilliant album. It's one that I've really, really grown to love this year. And that is Pink Floyd's Wish You Were Here. I was in a restaurant yesterday because me and my mum, we, we went to Covent Garden and we went to a vegan restaurant because I'm vegan. And, um, they were playing some really, really good music in there. Like they were playing like Led Zeppelin, they had Tom Petty as well, and they had so much great stuff on. And then all of a sudden I hear Wish You Were Here, the title track. And then after that I hear Money as well by Pink Floyd, which is like, 
kind of cool because they were playing some really cool stuff in that in that place so i'm definitely going back there and i'm bringing you on next time uh, anyway going to the actual album because i i've just been kind of slotting in anecdotes here and there this is a great great album definitely one that i've known about but got into very recently because when i was younger i knew about this album obviously but i was introduced to pink floyd via metal not even Dark Side of the Moon, I was introduced to them by metal, which I think is the best approach, to be honest. And I obviously knew of this album, because of the album cover itself, but I also knew Shine On You Crazy Diamond. So, I knew that, and I thought, well, I know that, and I also know the title track, but what about the stuff that's like in between that and the title track? Welcome to the Machine and Have a Cigar. Those are two excellent songs, and I think that Welcome to the Machine has really, really become my favourite song on that album. So, I don't know, I think it's probably the lyrical content, and I don't really need to tell you to listen to it, because you've already listened to it, if you watch my channel, because I think this is one that I think most people own in their collection, if they're a prog fan or not, you know, this is just one that you own, um, and it's fantastic. It's just a great album some of the best musicianship ever on this album. Maybe just give it a re-listen, you know? I had to do that a few times to really get into it because I thought, right, I'm really into animals at the moment because I was really getting into Pig Floyd at this point because I was listening to Animals a lot, which is my favorite album of all time. I've come to the conclusion. And I went back and I was re-listening to all the earlier Pink Floyd stuff, like Souls Full of Secrets, Piper, The Gates of Dawn, Atom Heart Mother Metal, all that kind of stuff. And I was really, really getting into all of these. Enough talking about Pink Floyd. I'm really, really into Pink Floyd at the moment, so just bear with me. Next one. Now we're going to be talking about more underrated music. This band is just amazing. And I really love their approach to the folkier aspects of prog and just pushing it all together to make a really cool folky prog kind of band. And that is Renaissance or Renaissance, however you want to say it. I've gotten used to saying Renaissance now because that's what Yarn says. <laughs> so... I've gotten used to saying Renaissance. But this is Scheherazade and Other Stories. This is a fantastic album. So, so beautiful. I just love Annie's voice so, so much. It's just so calming and so soothing. And it's just, it's not like really in your face powerful, which I do like, but it's not really like that. It's just so whimsical and just melodic and just amazing. I would give anything to see her sing live. But this is this album is so amazing and especially the big track on side two the actual title track song for Scheherazade it's just so good and I still prefer Ashes of Burning because that was the first album I heard of theirs and I've really kind of connected with that one the most but this one is stunning I mean the artwork as well it's just, it's so it's old England stuff you know it's so proggy like medieval England Ocean Gypsy is a fantastic song as well um, Trip to the Fair everything is just so great about this album and if you haven't heard of Renaissance or but any of their music, just go do it. Go listen to them. They are fantastic and you will not be disappointed. It, I find it quite hard to describe their music sometimes because like, with prog, when someone says, what, what am I meant to expect when I listen to prog? There's so many variations with different bands because they all have their own sounds depending on who they are. Because you've got bands like Gentle Giant, which I will be talking about now, who have that kind of weird like old englishy kind of like into -dun -dun sound and then you got yes with like a more melodic sound and then you got genesis with that again old england kind of very english sounding music or king crimson with that jazzier aspect to their music you know there's so much to digest when it comes to progressive rock and so many bands to discover and i'll probably talk about this in another video but again i think i've already covered it in my um introduction to progressive rock video which for you not if you haven't checked out Definitely go do it. Um, but talking of Gentle Giant, we are going to be talking about them right now. So this is Freehand by Gentle Giant. I've been really getting into this band lately. They don't have an extensive discography. I mean, they only lasted 10 years. But what they did put out in those 10 years was stuff of legend. And so underrated in just the music world in general, you know. I'm not talking about the progressive rock community. Because I think most people know of Gentle Giant. Because they're one of the kind of, not big, big bands. Of progressive rock but like bubbling under like with like van der Graaff generator and camel and stuff like that but they are such a great great band and they've got some really good ideas i mean they've toured with black sabbath and they've got a kind of sabbathy aspect to their music more in their earlier stuff i think the later you go the more kind of experimental and progressive it gets with this album it's, it's very funky i found the keyboards are very funky very jazzy kind of stuff it's so cool uh opens up with 
just the same, which is fantastic. And, you know, they got the title track as well, freehand. I really, really love Side 2. There's some really, really nice acoustic parts in Side 2, which I, I think are very, very pretty and very nice to listen to. So if you haven't heard this one yet, please do. It's fantastic. This is the Stephen Wilson remix of, of the album. So I keep doing this. I keep like leading into other bands. So we're going to talk about Camel now. So the Snow Goose music inspired concept album based on the novel. Uh, the name of the author will not come to me right now, but it will definitely come to me later on. This is a stunning album. It's so beautiful. I'm such a big fan of Camel at the moment as well. I mean, I've listened to their first four albums so many times in the past, like, a month. It's just going to be stuck with me forever, you know? I think Mirage is still my favourite. Um, not Mirage. Moon Madness is still my favourite. I just love that kind of melancholic and melodic uh, sound of it. But this is also very, very, very pretty as well. This is all instrumental. I think there are some kind of, like, choiry bits at some point, um, but mainly just all instrumental and it all flows into each other i reckon if you could just kind of have all the songs on one side they'd all just kind of lead into each other and it's beautifully orchestrated and definitely check it out if you haven't already it's it's stunning camel at their best you know check them out i'm not sure if they're still touring if they are please let me know because then i can try and try and get tickets if they're still come still around great thing about being from the uk is that all these kind of older 70s prog bands that everyone loves are from here and they mainly do tours here. Apart from King Crimson who have decided that they don't want to tour here right now. But they are doing a US tour so all of you who get to see King Crimson, you are very lucky. Despite the fact they are from the UK and they're not touring here on their tour. Whew, got a bit heated there. Alright, so we're coming up to our last couple of albums. So the first one here I'm going to talk about, Bundles. And this is by Soft Machine. Now, Soft Machine are a very interesting band because they started out as a kind of more psychedelic-y kind of pop group with that kind of jammy aspect, like they'd extend the music and stuff like that to keep it, keep it flowing. But then they turned full jazz fusion, and this is the album that has um, Alan Holdsworth on it, who I'm a big fan of, actually. I really, really love his guitar style and all that kind of stuff. I mean, I think I'm more drawn to guitarists who have their own unique sound rather than guitarists that are kind of copying or seeing what others have done and are trying to replicate it. You know what I mean. First of all, really, really nice artwork. Music, again, ain't half bad. It's so, so amazing and I'm just such a big Soft Machine fan and I'm so excited to see them this Friday at this festival thing. Um, you know, it's not my favourite Soft Machine album. Uh, I think third or fourth is, uh, is still my favourite, but this one is coming up close you know i love their their experimentation their improvisation the jazz fusion progginess of it all and it's just great um it's so great and such such talented musicians i mean to make music like this you've got to be somewhat talented which i wish i could do uh, i'd love to do some kind of fusion stuff at some point with the band but it's 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 fabulous it, it really is great so Check it out if you haven't yet. And last but certainly not least, this is an album that's relatively new to me. Uh, I've known about the, the person who did it for a long time because he was part of um, some, some bands that I really do like. Uh, one being Gong, and now you know who I'm talking about. So this is Fish Rising, and this is by Steve Hillage. I bought a Steve Hillage album really recently. But I can't seem to see it because I can't fit it in the shelf at the moment. Uh, so it should be up there somewhere, but I can't see it. Um, but this is probably my favourite of the Steve Hillage solo stuff. It's just great. It's just so, so good. I'm a big fan, again, guitarist with a style that's his own, you know. Psychedelic wonderfulness. I mean, I know this technically couldn't really be considered progressive rock because I think he does more stuff on the psychedelic-y side, which... It, it, it's like a fusion, like there's like the progier aspects and there is the psychedelic aspects and they all just fit together really nicely. And that is this album pretty much. I, I love that kind of psyche prog sound, something that I'm very much into. <laughs> and it's just wonderful. This is a wonderful, wonderful album and one to definitely check out if you haven't yet. I know a lot of you guys have been talking uh, in the comments about um, about this this guy and his albums and stuff like that. Now you know that I do listen to them. so. 
Here we go, Fish Rising by Steve Hillage. And that, my friends, is the end of today's video. I am so happy to be back on YouTube. I feel so full of life and more inclined to post. I think that from now on, if I just don't feel like posting on a scheduled day, I'm just not going to force myself because I want to have this upbeat energy in all my videos so that it's more pleasant to watch. Um, so, hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know your favourite albums of 1975 and if I've missed out any of them. Uh, but these are my personal favourites, so if I've missed them, it's probably because I've not listened to them yet or I don't consider them favourite album. So, as I mentioned near the beginning of the video, I'm going to be spinning the wheel and picking the album of the day, which I will listen to after I have done this video. So, here we go. Ah, Revolver by The Beatles is the album of the day. What a fantastic album. I need to re-listen to that. So I will today because it's fun on the wheel. Talking of that, I have been doing this as like a little mini series on my TikTok page. So if you follow me on TikTok, then check it out. And yeah, thank you guys for watching. I will see you when I next see you. I'm hoping to do another live stream at some point because I really like doing those and interacting with you guys. So I will see you all in the next video. Bye-bye.